I would like to show you how to do a couple things in Camera Raw before I move forward. Again, we're not going to cover the entire chapter. Um, the chapter four in your textbook is very long, and I think that it, it spends too much time going over very specific editing that you can do in Camera Raw, and our class is going to focus more on Photoshop. But Camera Raw is cool, and it should be used for what it's good for. And so I want to launch some pictures or some photographs into Camera Raw just to play around with them and show you what some of the options are. The first thing I want to show you is how to straighten an image because that is a specific requirement of Project One in your class. And so if I right click on this picture here that was taken crooked of this building, I can choose to open in Camera Raw and it will launch. I'm going to expand it so it takes over the window so you don't have to see bridge in the background. And although it still says bridge at the top of my screen, um, I am in the Camera Raw plugin. I just launched it from bridge. And so this is, this is definitely a crooked image and I can straighten an image by selecting the straighten tool, transform and straighten tool. And if I look at my transform panel on the right hand side, there are presets that will help me transform. And then if I wanted to, I could manually edit the bottom down here. And so I'm going to click across the top first because always try to let the program help you. And then if it can't do what you want, then do the hard work of figuring out how to do the specifics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this letter A. And that's like if you had crooked text or something, it would help you rotate it. Um, if you click through, you'll see it gives you different options. These are just presets that are that are um, are set by Camera and Adobe that should help you. And one of these may work for what you need. And so I kind of like the first one, even though the first one was for text. It did a really nice job with this image. But unfortunately, if I wanted to use this for a project that had to be a square, I have all this extra area on the outside that has uh, unprinted material. Now I could leave it and I could make it part of the design. I could add some color in the background. Or I'm going to take this scale slider. If I slide to the left, it makes it smaller. If I slide it to the right, it makes it bigger. And so I could slide it until my artwork covers the entire picture. Well, didn't mean to do that. And then I could crop it, but I have a straight image. For your activity for Project One, you'll have to straighten the Eiffel Tower, not the Eiffel Tower, why do I keep saying that? Uh, the Leading Tower of Pisa, um, which will crop nicely. This one is not going to crop so well. I'm going to hit Cancel here, and I'm going to launch maybe that wood grain picture we were looking at before. And I'm going to choose to right click, and uh, I can't launch it because I made it a Photoshop file. So we can go back. I'm going to go back to the desktop and I want to go to my source images and I want to get the original file, the JPEG, and I should be able to right click and open that in Camera Raw. Remember in the slideshow I told you there are only certain file formats that Camera Raw can open and they are a JPEG, a TIFF file, or a RAW file. And so I converted that to be a Photoshop file so I can't launch it um, in Camera Raw. Okay, so I want to talk about some of the other options that are available to you in Camera Raw. And I'm just going to click around to some random ones because I don't want to cover them in their entirety. And so I want to talk about these tabs. The, the textbook goes on and on about the tabs on the right hand side here. And so you can, you can mess around with them. So if you think that your image is underexposed, you, um, overexposed, you can slide the slider to the left and it will act as if it is making it less exposed. You could slide it to the right and it would overexpose it and put it back to zero and it will go back to the default. You can click on the next tab. You could perform a curve adjustment. We haven't learned how to do curves though yet, so I'm going to skip over that because it's one of the more complicated things to do. Um, if we wanted to sharpen the picture, we could increase the amount of the sharpen and we could mess around with these settings until we get something that we want. One of the cool ones I like is uh, you can mess around with the color of a picture. And so if this has too many reds in it, you can slide them and make them a little bit more pink. Or you can make them a little bit more red. You can slide these sliders until you get the color adjustment that you want. And so I'm going to try to make it more yellow. And if I hit OK or Done, I've now edited that, edited that image so it has a little bit less red and it's a little more yellow. One of the other things that you can do is you can always launch a picture into Camera Raw. You can make those adjustments. So if we go back to that tab, you can see the adjustments are still there. They're saved in Camera Raw. We can go, maybe we want to increase the saturation. Maybe blow it out because we're doing something funky. When you're done, if this is good to go and now you need to edit it for, 
for something else in Photoshop, you can open the image and you can tell it to open in Photoshop. And then now you've performed some pre-editing in Camera Raw and when you've launched it into Photoshop, now you can perform additional edits. But those edits that you made in Camera Raw, they're still saved, which is the cool part of Camera Raw. Okay, I'm going to end this, this video here. If you want to learn more about Camera Raw, consider reading all of Chapter 4 in your textbook or take uh, Photoshop for Photographers, which is the advanced Photoshop class that you would take after this one if you're a photography major.